Hello everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today I thought we would start and make the beach donkeys. Oops, get the right side for you, go that side instead. So just one really important thing that I need to say and that is thank you very much to Tina Page who is the sponsor of today's video. Tina sponsored me through my coffee account um, and I was very grateful to hear from her and she suggested that we get the kit for the donkey. So thank you very much Tina on behalf of both myself and on behalf of everybody else who watches this video both now and in the future because your kind generosity and support has made this tutorial possible. So thank you Tina. So these are a new pattern from um, Sarah Peel of Cool Crafting, which is the home of everything Lunar Lapping related. And the um, beach donkeys, I think are called a Sol and Sydney, are um, a standalone pattern. They're not in any of the books as yet. Um, so you, you need to remember to buy the correct kit that has the pattern in it. But once you've bought your pattern and your kit, obviously you can use the pattern again and again. Um, you've got that then for your free use, but you will need to buy some more felt and, and buy a, a kit if you want to make them again in the future. But obviously you know that already. So today I'm going to concentrate on making the head and then in a separate video, we'll move on to the body and the limbs and putting it all together. I think that way tends to fall about halfway between the two in terms of time. So hopefully that's a nice split for everybody. And if you're familiar with making the bodies anyway, you don't need to trawl through the video. You can just watch the bit that, that you need to watch. As always, I will um, chapter this as well. So you can, whether you want to work on the... Um, on the muzzle or on the ears or on the actual head construction then you can jump ahead to those chapters and as always I'll be sewing as much of this as I can do by machine. Now the interesting thing is I think that quite a lot of this can be sewn by machine anyway. I think Sarah's designed the body, um, limbs and most of the head to be sewn by machine so that's quite a difference than normally where she advocates hand sewing them. So for all of us machine lovers, we don't need to add any seam allowance to any of the pattern pieces because it's already on there for us. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tilt the camera down and we'll get started. Okay, so when you buy your kit from Cool Crafting, it'll come um, like this in a little plastic um, bag. Um, so you'll have your main felt for your character, I'm out of screen top, your main felt for your character. In this one I am doing, uh, which I, uh, they'd only got the darker kit available, so that's the one that I bought. Um, you've got, so, so that's 100% wool felt. You've then got this boucle fabric, which has got a lovely handle to it and feel to it, so that's really nice. But that is one-sided, so we, we need to talk about Moringa pattern pieces on that. You also get a piece of wonderful faux fur, look at the... The pile on that is amazing, isn't it? So that's going to be really interesting to, to sew with that. And then you also get a haberdashery kit. I might not be able to see them from the glare, but there is a piece of lighter felt in there. There's several buttons of different sizes for eyes, attaching the arms, attaching the legs and attaching the tail, and a reel of thread to match the colour choice that you've got in your felt. Um, you'll also get a policy, um, policy booklet. You can tell I used to work in insurance, can't you? You'll also get a pattern booklet um, with all of your step-by-step -step instructions in. And at the back, there's a lovely story about Sol and Sydney as well. And then you'll get two pages of A4, which has your pattern pieces on that you can then um, trace and cut out. Now, as if you um, have watched my videos before, you know that I advocate keeping your master copy of your pattern in one piece and then using tracing paper to trace your pattern pieces off. Now, there are quite a few pattern pieces with this, but the other, um, so, so you do need to trace those off. The other thing that I advocate doing, excuse my squeaky chair, um, is that where you have got um, a pattern piece that you need to cut out more than once. So in this case, let's do, we've got the hands. I'm trying to find my pattern piece number four for my hands. I've got three out of the four here. Then I do advocate um, or suggest that you cut out the, the correct number of pattern pieces for that item and this is because we're going to be cutting our felt out singularly we're not going to fold it over and we need to have those a we have, need to make sure we've got the right number of pattern pieces on our felt before we start cutting out but also some of these fabric 
um, pattern pieces need to be mirrored. So you need a left and a right. You can't have two the same direction. You have to have them a left and a right. And we'll talk about that when we get to the boucle especially. Um, but we've also got the, um, the felt to talk about. So what I've done now is I have gone ahead and I have traced off all of my, the pattern pieces I needed. But let me just talk to you about this mirroring because it's really important when you're tracing these off in the first place to make, and if you've already traced yours off, then just check this with me. When we lay our pattern pieces out, we need to lay them in a certain orientation. So like, let's say we're using the boucle. Now the boucle has got a very clear, that's the wrong side of the boucle, and that's the right side. Can you see how much fluffier and textured this side is? So that's the right side that we're going to be using because if you look on your picture, you can see that that's the textured side that's been used for the muzzle and for the hands and for the um, hooves. So, this is gonna be white paper on white fabric, I know, but let me just lay it out like this. So when we're cutting out our pattern pieces, we need to make sure that we have got two pairs of our hands. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So the pattern on the pattern um, document here will show you one pattern piece like this and it'll say cut four in boot clay. There's two ways of doing that. In the pattern instructions, Sarah has you folding this fabric in half and then you'll pin two of your pattern pieces onto the fabric and then you will get your two, one pair left and right and the second pair left and right for the two hands. The way that I do it, because I like to try and get as most as we can do out of our fabric, is I will lay my fabric out singularly, but then I have to make sure that my pattern pieces have a left and a right. So if we look at this pattern piece here with the thumb and then going over to the hand, and if I put this back onto this dark surface so you can see it, we've got two pattern pieces with the thumb facing each other and again here with the thumb facing each other. And that's really important because if we cut them all out this way, so all the thumbs are going towards the um, left, let me get my left and my right, no, towards the right, can't get my left and right and um, the right way around, then what will happen is that when you try and put these together, you'll have one with the thumb going that way and one with the thumb going that way and you haven't got a pair that you can sew together. So you need to make sure that when you are cutting these out, you have two pairs. And the best way to do that is to have it so that the thumbs are pointing towards each other on, on each of them. So you've got two with the thumbs going towards the right and two with the thumbs going towards the left. If you've got a pattern piece where it is symmetrical and where when you fold it in half like this ear piece, the pattern is the same on the left and the right, you don't need to mirror those copies. You can just cut out your four that way. I mean, two in boucle and two in um, felt. But you don't need to worry about that being mirrored because that is a symmetrical shape and you haven't got a left and a right side to it. Same like with the foot pad, the foot pad is the same, so you can just cut that out as it is just straight because there's no left and no right because it's a symmetrical shape. On the body, whilst it is a, so the side body, whilst it is a symmetrical shape and you can pop these on top of each other pretty much and they are the same on the left and the right, what we do need to be pay attention to is the dart because if we cut out two the same way, we're gonna have two with the darts on the wrong side and the darts are not going to match. So again on here, I've done two bodies and I've done one with the um, dart on the right and one with the dart on the left. So that then makes it correct when we cut it out of the felt. Now felt should in theory be um, two-sided, but I have found with the Cool Crafting felt that generally, and yet the same with this one I think, that one side of the felt is less mottled and less sort of flecky, if you like, than the other side. So that's the one side. And then that's the other side. Um, you might not be able to tell a difference on the camera, but I certainly can in person. And so that's why, again, I'm going to be cutting mine out with the flex side up top, because I like that extra texture. 
but again if you were to cut one half of your face out this side and one half out this side you may notice a difference so again that's why i advocate cutting it out all in all in one part um so the first thing that we're going to do then is as i say once you've traced off your pattern pieces and established which is left and right they're all to be machine sewn and we know that because they've all got this inside dotted line so there's a solid line there that you need to cut out on but then they've all got this dotted line inside and that suggests that these are going to be put right sides together and then turned round um, so that the um, right sides are together yeah when you stitch it so you stitch along this line here or it's generally quarter of an inch in um, and then you turn it round to the right way round so that the stitching goes on the inside because these are machine stitched the next thing that you need to do then is to separate your pattern pieces out into what is going to fit onto the boucle and what is going to fit onto your felt so the muzzle goes muzzle and the hands two of the ears um i've got those marked as two as boucle and two as felt the body all comes out of the felt. The feet pads, foot pads come out of the felt. The mane is going to come out of the faux fur. Your hoof is going to come out of your boucle. There's the first ear. This here is the nose bridge, which is out of felt. The tail is coming out of the um, faux fur. The head is coming out of sofa. So you just work your way through all of your pattern pieces and just see what you actually need to be coming out of which fabric. Because then the next thing that we're going to do is we're then going to start and add these pattern pieces onto our felt on the right side that you want to use, using the felt as economically as possible. So where we get a little section like that, I might just move things along slightly that we can fit that foot pad in because that makes a good use of this extra spare felt just up there. So again, we're going to start and put these together. Have your pins handy because we can then, once we're happy with where the placement is, then we can go ahead and pin it. And I always go right up to the very edge with my pattern pieces. So I just roughly just pin them on at this moment in time. So again, make sure that you're going right up to the edges because we can add extra pins ready for cutting out in the future. Let me just make sure that you can see. But I just want you to kind of get used to putting all of these pieces up to each other as much as you can do, whilst not shaving anything off the shapes. If you want it to turn out precisely as Sarah Peel, the designer intended, then you do need to put everything together the way that she has drafted it so again I can fit a little foot pad in there so I will do and that's going to minimize some of the waste and and just just work through it as, as quickly as you can well not as quickly as you can it doesn't really matter does it if you go quick or not take as much time as you need to make sure that you've got everything on there as with the correct placement as you want um, the felt pieces are pretty good and I'll come to the end and show you my layout just so that you can see and then I'm going to repeat that same process with my um, boucle as well so this is where it helps before I start cutting anything out and that I know that I've got four legs and four arms so that's why I have the correct number of pattern pieces because I don't want to sort of guesstimate it at, at, the, at the lower end of the fabric and then run out the, the closer we get towards the end. So let me get these pinned on and then I'll come back to you and just show you my layout and show you how much felt we've got left at the end. Okay, okay, so here we are. We've got all of our pattern pieces here all pinned onto our fabric and I've managed to do it and leave a little section here at the end spare and also a strip along here spare. Now, you know, obviously you don't have to butt yours up quite as close as this if you don't want to, but hopefully you can see by having the four leg pieces here and the four arm pieces, as well as the duplicates of the others, you can absolutely see with confidence that we've got enough room on our piece of felt. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, so what I've done is I've just gone around, so after I've just put one or two pins in just to hold the pattern piece down whilst I worked out the layout, 
I've now gone back and put in more pins so that when I cut this out, we can stay as true to those cutting lines as possible. If you want to, and if you're working on a paler or um, coloured felt, or if you've got a chalk pencil, you can now go round and trace round these shapes if you wanted to before cutting out. Um, I tend to just leave them attached and then either use a rotary cutter, um, which is one of these. A rotary cutter that's used for quilting with a razor blade on the end there and you've got a safety switch here to to cover or to expose the blade that works quite well on felt or just use your ordinary scissors um absolutely fine as well um so this is the layout that i've got now for the um main felt so i've got a side body here and another side body and then i managed to fit a foot pad in either side there for the hooves I've then got the donkey tail just tucked in just along here. And then leg three, two, one, and four on there as well. And I've made sure that I've got them the right orientation because again, the leg has got a little notch on it. And so we need to make sure that they're all going to line up the right way when we cut those out. The forearm pieces, which are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way around those go. And then um, an ear here an ear here and an ear just here as well Let me move this down and these are the rest of the head pieces here which are really some very peculiar shapes so we've really got to be careful with those that we cut them out correctly and that we've traced them correctly we've got the side head we've got um the other side head as well um and then we've got a nose bridge so we've got quite a lot there that we need to, to put together and then i've got the final tummy piece just here and as i say i've got a piece of felt that i can spare at the end so there's plenty of room on the felt the kit is generous with it so that's the layout that i've got there so let me pop that to one side so that i can cut those out in a moment now on the boucle when i was starting to lay my pieces down my inclination was to try and pin everything on the bobbly side but actually when I turned it over and worked with the smoother side, then actually I felt like I was in more control of my fabric of my pattern piece on the fabric and you're gonna get a neater cut out edge. So I've actually pinned these onto the um, wrong side of the fabric, which is the smoother side. So you've got the two hooves here, two of the hands there and two of the hands over here. I've got the boucle muzzle here, which I've, um, that's a pattern piece that you'll see and it has a cut on the fold shape, but I've actually cut my template out on the fold and then marked it up so that I got it as one piece. And then I've got my two ear pieces here, which again are then the inside of the ears. So that's that for the boucle. And again, we've got um, quite a lot left over here. We haven't got enough for doing two donkeys, just in case you want to know. Um, but we've only got a little bit spare. But again, it's, it's useful to have some fabric spare sometimes. And then here's our faux fur. Now on the pattern piece, you've got an arrow. And now that shows you the direction of the fur. So in this case, the pile of the fur smooths down this way from top to bottom. And so when I've turned it over, that's the direction that my arrow goes with the fur going from the top down to the bottom. And then we've got the little tail tuft piece cut on the end there. There are some tips for cutting out fur because the last thing that you want to do with fur, I mean, the rest of it, you can cut out just as it is, just as normal, that's no problem. But on fur, you need to be really careful because if you just put your pattern piece on and get your scissors and just snip straight across like that, you're going to lose some of the end of this fur just here that you want to create the nice mane effect. So if you look at the bottom of your fur here, the woven fabric um, that's on the bottom of the fur is here, and then you've got about an inch, inch and a half left of tuft, if you like, that's left of the fur. So you want to, whatever you cut off, you need to preserve that because that's all part of the design. And the way that you do that is you'll take your scissors so I wouldn't so just to clarify I wouldn't cut this out with a rotary cutter at all because there's no way you can control that and the way that people say to do that is to take your scissors to feed it in at the end of your pattern piece and if you just rub your scissors along you'll be able to feel where that fabric is and then you just take a little snip and the idea is that if you just keep doing that just keep going through you're going to go through the fur and kind of part it in order to snip off 
the, the bit of the fur that you want so that as you're snipping, you're not snipping through the fur or minimally, you get a little bit that comes off. But the idea is that when you've cut, and you can see there that I've cut a section there, but if I fold that back, you can see that there's still a lot of fur and the tuftiness left over the end of that. And that's how you do it. I mean, if you've got snips as well, let me get my snips in there, really good, because they've got a lovely sharp point. And again, just feed them sort of pointing slightly up and you'll sort of feel your way to the fur so that you're on the back of this fabric. And then when you've gone through a little way, then you can do a snip. And then again, just, just keep going across like that. And the same when you're going up the other way as well. So we just cut off this section here. And then if I peel that away, we've got a little bit of fur where it's just been trimmed, the downy bits here. Just a small amount. But here you can see you've got the tuft, the still that tufty fur after the end of that mesh that the woven edge is finished. And again on here, we can see that that overlapping fur there has been cut off. So again, you know, fur is, is messy. So, you, you know, if you've, if you've got any breathing difficulties, do be careful when you're handling the fur. Um, you don't want to be breathing in these bits if you can help it. But that's the way that you cut through fur in order to save your, your place. You can try and fold it back like this and then cut, but you're not gonna get a clean line. So, so your preference is to use something like your snips or, or your fine edge scissors, and literally you're going in through the fur, so you're not sn just, just cutting straight across like that and cutting all the fur off. You're actually going through your fur, just finding your way through that fur, almost like parting the hair if you like. And then, you can't really see where you go in anyway, but if you just kind of run your, run your the blade across, you'll feel the back of the mesh. And then when you feel you're far enough in, then you can take a snip. And again, just part through. And because you're going in, you're just, just through the edge. So you can't see the blade of my scissors from the other side because it's hidden behind all of that fur. And then I'm just taking a little snip and that will just help you preserve as much of that tuftiness of that fur as possible. So again, we can then split that and we'll be able to see, because I've got the pin in at the moment that's holding it all down. But again, going down this way, so in line with the fur, again, you're going to go straight through that fur and make a little line through your little parting, if you like, on the back. And then you can then pull that away and you'll be left, once I've taken this pin out, you'll be left with your fur and you've got your your lovely tuft going down and minimal shedding on there and that will then attach to the end of the tail when we've made the tail. So I hope that helps on that. Um, the boucle is just fine, just cut that out with scissors as normal. The felt's fine, just cut that out with scissors or your rotary cutter um, and then you'll be ready then for getting started. Okay, so I've just finished cutting everything out. Now, just to um, say as well, because I didn't say when I was um, spoken, speaking to you earlier, um, the reason we're cutting everything out at this stage is so that you make sure you've got enough felt. I would never advocate on a kit like this where you've got a limited amount of supplies, only cutting out the fabric for, say, the body at one stage or just the legs and then coming back to that felt later. You're much better to lay everything out in one go and make sure that you've got enough felt for everything before you even take one snip. So that would be my advice. And so that's what, what we've done here. Okay, so then what I've then done is you can see I've sort of portioned this out. So I've got all my body pieces there. I'm going to put those to one side. We've got our two pairs of legs. They're going to go to the, to the same side because that's going to be for a later video. And then we've got our two feet pads as well. They're going to go there. The tail we'll be doing later. The two pairs of arms we'll be doing later. And that then leaves us with, with the, these pieces here. And we've got some really peculiar shaped pieces on this, this pattern. Um, let me just sort out this as well. We need to have our muzzle handy so our arms can go over, not our arms, our hands can go over there. The inside of the ears are needed, so let, we'll have those just here. We don't need, oh, we do need the mane. We don't need the tail tuft, so that can go to one side. We don't need the hooves or the other arm pieces just yet. So I put, this is what I do, I sort everything out to try and keep organised because it's so easy when you've got so many pattern pieces to lose yourself. So all I've got here now 
other pieces for the head. So two inside ears, two outer ears, the mane, the muzzle, two side pieces and they're mirrored because we can see that that straight edge goes together. Whether that's the right straight edge or not, it doesn't matter at this point, but we've got those pieces together. Two side head pieces together and again they're mirrored because we can see from this curve one goes one way, one goes the other. And then we've got the nose bridge as well, with a little bit extra added onto it. Um, but we've got the nose bridge as well, so we'll be able to work with all of these. So what I'm going to do is have a look at the instructions, see what has to happen next. Just make sure you've got all of your pieces cut out like this and that you're ready to start. And then we're going to get our sewing machine threaded up with the thread that came with our kit. So do yourself a bobbin and do and thread your machine up, your sewing machine up with your thread, and then we'll we'll get started. Okay, so once you've got your machine all loaded up, you're going to take your felt pieces. We're going to take our ear pieces first. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know that when I take a pattern piece off, I always like to just put a pin back on it again, just to mark which is the right side of my fabric. Um, it does just help sometimes when you're using fabrics to make sure that you've got the same side each time. The boucle doesn't matter because it's got a right side and a wrong side and it's just until we start working with these pattern, these fabric pieces as to what we can do then to match those up. So let's just put our pattern pieces away to one side nice and safely to keep those to one side. We move my pins out of the way so they don't get mixed up especially when you're toy making just make sure you keep your work surface um, very tidy and not have too many pins around because it is quite easy to um, mix up a pin with your stitching sometimes and it fall inside or if you've got pins on your table just loose and you pick up a handful of stuffing you could have a pin in there and you don't notice it um, and that would be very unfortunate for a child if they were cuddling that toy to notice. So we know we've got two pins here just to mark our right side of our fabric. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put the ear pieces, turn those over so that these are right side together. So now we know we've got right side together. I'm going to take that pin out straight away and I'm going to use that to start and just attach this pin together, this, um, these two pieces together. I'm going to use coloured heads of the pin so that you can see how I'm pinning this. I'm pinning it pretty much out towards the seam that I'm going to be sewing and we're going to start down the bottom here and reverse stitch and then we're going to sew round to the top and then we're going to pivot, I'll show you how to do that and then we're going to come all the way back down again and then cast off our threads and just reverse and sew there. So we're going to do that for both of them so let me just get this one ready as well. I'll just show you one though. So again I've just taken that pin out that was marking the right side and then we're going to pop these pins in to be able to sew these ears. So I'll show you on video one, just doing one, because you can then um, obviously go back and just watch the video again if you need a refresher on how to do it when you come to do your second ear. And we're just going to sew around here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance so that we're using the same as been marked on the pattern piece. Um, and that's, so let's get on with doing that. So I've got my thread in my machine. I think you can see there okay. Let me work with the dark side up because you'll be able to see that better against the work. So I've pinned them the wrong way around. So we can work with that then against the bed of the machine so that you can see what's happening better. Okay. So when I'm sewing on um, small pieces like this, rather than have the needle in the center of the, the oval on my presser foot, I usually move it to one side or the other. Um, because I think that that way then you can kind of see where you're going a little bit easier. So if you've got the ability to move your needle either to the left or the right, then do that. So on mine, I can do that this way. Let's go across to the right, um, no, to the right, yes. Get my left and my right. So I've got that in needle position number seven. So my needle position goes from zero to seven. And then I'm going to just rest this fabric on the edge of my, the pin on the edge of my presser foot just on the edge there and then I'm going to use between the edge of my presser foot and where my needle position is as being my quarter of an inch. Now if you've got a seam gauge which is one of these you can line that up with the position of your needle and see where the edge of the foot is falling and that will tell you whether or not you've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance or not. 
and that's pretty spot on so I'm going to leave that at that point there so I'm now using the edge of my presser foot in order to tell me where to go and what how to stitch which I think makes it easier than trying to find it in the middle so I'll take a couple of stitches forward and then I'm going to go back towards the start of my ear and then come forward make sure you hold on to your threads when you start take it nice and steady if you stop and you've got um, an, the function the where it puts the needle always down in your work when you'll stop you're good to engage that here because that allows the doesn't allow the fabric to move underneath your presser foot while you just take a breather okay so because we're coming around a curve you might need to change the angle and if that's the case, case you leave your needle in the work and if you've not got a needle up down position then you can just use the button on the side of your machine here to hand crank your needle up or down so sometimes i talk about hand cranking and that's the button that's the um the um dial or disc that i'm using and then we can lift up our presser foot because we've got our needle in our work we can swivel our sewing around and it's not going to lose its place you can adjust the position for the next few stitches and take those stitches now with confidence and then if you need to further on you can lift your presser foot and adjust it again to get that lovely curved shape to the ear so we're going to kind of estimate when we're going to stop about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the ear and this is where pivoting really does help so we're going to lift the presser foot up once we've got our needle in the work and then we can spin it round and then we can start and come down the other side of the ear now. So then let's just follow that curve again. Might need a little bit of help. Take your pins out. We don't sew over pins. It damages your machine. And then we're going to start sewing down the ear down to this side here. Again, pivot if you need to, but always stop with your needle in your work or hand crank it down. And at the bottom, we're just going to reverse again just because we're going to put some pressure on that edge when we turn this round. So take our needle out of our work now and we're going to cut our threads both at the start and at the end. And there we've got one ear sewn. The next thing then that I would suggest that you do is because you've got a curved edge here and you've got some really thick fabric, so you can see my stitching around there as well for my quarter of an inch, is I would notch into this. So you take some triangles out of your fabric along the curved edge because when we have to turn this round it, if we don't do this you're going to get a bulk into your ear and it won't quite sit straight and you can always try one side being notched and one side not just to try it and and you should see a difference between the side that you notch and the side that you don't and then we're going to take the end of the ear off straight and just take off anything that we can just to reduce the bulk just at that point as well. The other thing that I've forgotten to tell you about is notching your patterns pieces, isn't it? I bet you're all shouting at the screen telling me. So let me just get this ear finished and then we'll go back. I don't think there was a, oh, there is a notch in the centre of the ear. Oh, Claire. Fancy forgetting that. Right. If you've don't notch like this you can always use your pinking shears to go around so these are pinking shears here and these have the little triangles on the blades of the scissors you can see those there and when you cut into through your fabric you will get a triangular edge to it and that does exactly the same job as taking these notches out here so before i turn this round let's pop our pattern piece back onto the here, and we've got a notch in the centre here so I'm just going to notch that and by notch it you just take one little snip about two couple of millimetres into the felt and it just gives you a little reference point that you can refer to then when you need to okay so with this ear now we are now going to very carefully turn it round the other way so just take your time and that's why we've reinforced the bottom of those seams so that it will turn round nicely and you can either get a turning tool or you can get a um, knitting needle or you can sometimes just use your fingers just to turn this ear around you've got two very thick fabrics so you've got to take your time with them 
And the other thing you can do is push your finger up inside, see if that will help turn it as well. And that's doing most of it. And then the other thing that I would do is get an, a pin and then using that very carefully, just ease out the rest of that ear up towards that tip. Now, because you've sewn to a point, we won't be able to get it right out at the very point, I don't think. We've done a pretty good job there. That's not too bad, is it? Um, but that gives us our ear. Now, it's quite a thick, full ear. So just um, take your time with it. And then we've got a little notch there that we can then work into. Now, interestingly enough, that notch on the ear of the boucle seems to have gone a little deeper than I originally um, snipped it. So if you look on this side, it's quite a small one but it's turned into quite a big one on that side. So just ease your seams out by your fingers so that you've got all your fluff all out of your seams and that's all lying nice and flat. And then that ear there should be quite nice and flat. And then what we're going to do then is we are going to um, pleat the boucle at the base so that the felt becomes visible at the front. So they actually want to Take that sort of slightly back and that slightly back so that you've got an ear that looks fairly full. So if you just kind of pull the raw edges in together into the middle, you're going to get that effect anyway because those ears do want to sort of stick up quite nicely anyway so i think what sarah is trying the designer sarah peel is trying to do is have some of this boucle go off to the edge but i think pretty much that's kind of staying like that anyway and then i think you can put a couple of stitches in the back there just to hold that in place you can see I'm fiddling with it. I don't like in, in imprecise instructions. It just says, pleat the boucle at the base so that the felt becomes visible at the front. Oh, so the felt becomes visible at the front. Okay, so you're trying to push the boucle in so you can get those edges back in so you can see the, the felt at the end there. And then it says to tack in place. So I'm just going to pop that back into my sewing machine. And I'm just going to take a few stitches very carefully across the edge. You can do that bit by hand if you want to, but that's just going to hold that in place for us whilst we place that within the head. So there's my tacking stitches at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and make the other ear and then I'll come back to you and we'll start and talk about how we place those within the head pieces. Okay, so we're just going to take a step backwards and we're just going to mark all of our pieces up before we go any further. So I should have done this before, so I do apologise. And we're just going to have a look and see where we've got our notches and where we've got our little tailor's tacks because we're going to mark those up. So you'll need a hand sewing needle. There's one in the kit. And you need a contrast thread. So in this case, let's use this bright pink because that's going to stand out nicely. And take a length of your contrast thread and thread your sewing needle. So we threaded the needle, we don't put a knot at the end, we just put the ends together. The thread is double, okay, so both ends are equal. And then there's a little dot at the bottom of, the, of this piece here, which is the side back head. So we're going to take a, a stitch, so put a, a, like a one stitch through and then out again the other side. You've got to make sure that you can see your needle on the other side. And then we're going to take that through and leave a tail of about an inch long. And then we're going to go through the opposite direction. So if you went north to south to start off with, you're going to go east to west this time. Make sure you can see your your needle, your thread again on the other side. And then we're going to snip off the thread, leaving an, about an inch. And we've left a loop in the middle of the um, thread as well. The same about an inch. And then we're going to snip through that. And that's called a tailor's tack. And what it does is it marks it either with a cross on one side or with the tufty threads on the other to mark where that position is for that point. 
because that's what we need to know. The other thing is there are a couple of notches as well. So there's a notch towards the top of the head on that side. Is there another notch? No, I don't believe so. Okay. And then, so we need to do the same on the other side head, which is here. So we'll do our tailor's tack again. And they do, you can get quite quick at doing these little tailor's tacks. You, on this thick felt though, you've got to make sure that you go through to the other side. So that's that piece. And then on the muzzle as well, I would also mark the, do a tailor's tack as well at this point here on the on the muzzle again make sure you go through to the other side because you want to be able to see this mark from both sides of your fabric leave your notch not um your thread might have enough just to do one more on my thread so just get used to doing these little tailors tacks because they're a really useful way of marking it especially if you don't want to have a pen and leave a mark permanently because look you can see very clearly on the back of here as to where those marks are and then you've got your tufty threads this side that you know where they are. We've also got some notches as well so we're just going to snip those little notches into the edges. Again you're just going in by a millimetre or two and I also mark off the, I snip into the legs of my darts just by leaving again another little notch at the bottom of those so obviously we can't put a notch in the top of the dart, so that's why we put the tufty thread um, there, the tailor's tack. So that's marked that piece up. So I've got a little notch on the side back of the head there. And there. No more on there. One on the side of the head, just so in the centre, I think, just there. And then we're all good to go. Okay, so back to where we were. Put my needle out the way so that doesn't get mixed up with our character for future reference later. So the bit that we need now is the side heads, both of those two. So let's put the other pieces away and we need our ears. And the way that it's drawn in the in the um, booklet is to have them on this. So you've got this, this cut out piece here pointing away from each other and the very long flat edge is together and that's going to give you the correct orientation and the next oh let me take our pattern pieces off and i've got both right sides up on my fabric so i'm not going to mark that with pins because we know that that's both right sides up but we will be needing our pin cushion So when you take your pattern pieces off your tailor's tack, just put your finger on the threads just to hold them still so they don't sort of come away with the pattern piece. Just tuck those down and down towards the, the centre here. Okay, so you're going to take each of your ears and you're going to turn it upside down so the back of the felt is showing and then you're going to put that so that the ear is into the bottom edge of this V. And then when you've done that, you're going to fold your felt over like that. And then we can put a pin in just to hold that in place. And we, we might struggle to get a pin through all of those layers of fabric. But we're going to try. Not quite. So, yeah, you can just about do it, but it is quite thick. So that's the edge of the ear and it's sandwiched in between those two bits of felt. So let's put it back down again because we've got the ear pointing out this way and that's correct. So we're going to take our other ear and that's we're going to turn that over. But this side, this time it's pointing towards the left and we're going to pop that in. And then the back of the head there comes up and over the top of that pattern, that, that ear piece. And put the raw edges together. Make sure that your edges are along the edge of the V. And that you've got those all nicely sandwiched. And again, we're going to now put a pin in to hold that in place for us. So there's one there. And then I'm putting a piece to hold the fabric together. Just at the top of the ear as well to hold that together. So now we're going to put, let's pop these back down again so that we can see we've got a left and a right because it's going to make sure our ears are in the right orientation. And then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew across this edge here. So just make sure that your ears are nice 
nicely matched. And you're going to sew from the edge of the fabric from where the notches are all the way down to the point here. And it's just going to be sewn just in a straight line. So from, from the edges here where your notches are on the edge all the way down to that um, little, we can see a little pink cross where I've put our tailor's tack. We're going to do that on both of them. So take your time when you're sewing um, things like this that are really thick because it can sometimes um, be a problem. Now, on the back of your presser foot, you might have this little black button, if you can see that. And what that means is it, it, that's, that can press in while you're starting on thick fabric so that the presser foot doesn't tilt. So let's use that, shall we, today. So let's put our presser foot in. We're going to start at the um, edge here. And, I, and my presser foot is tilting already, so I'm going to press that button in with my finger and that then holds the presser foot straight for me and it won't then flick up or break our needle if we don't want it to. I've got a thread caught at the back, that's it. So a couple of stitches forward, so I've still got my quarter of an inch marked. So a couple of stitches forward and we're struggling already. So keep just moving your presser foot lift your presser foot up with the button at the back and just help it move forward if it needs to until those feed dogs can grab hold of the fabric and when you can just go back as well just to keep that all moving nicely and if you've also got one of these which is an awl so a pointy tool you can also put that just behind the needle and you can just push that into the work and that would also just help you move that felt forward. So it is quite thick, but you can eventually get going. And then when you get to the dark we are, end, we are actually going to reverse a couple of stitches just to fix that in. And then we're going to take our work out. I did sew over my pins then, but you didn't see that, did you? I did forget to take those out. And then what we're going to do then is we are going to use our snips, where have they gone to? and take our threads off. So when we turn this round, there's our ear sticking out of the side of our head and we can see we've gone down to that point. So now that we've got that one done, we're going to then go on to the other one and we're going to sew the other one exactly the same and then we will have a right, left front and a right front for the side of our head. Okay, so once you've finished and you've got those um, bits out, we can take the little threads out for the tailor's tacks because they've served their purpose. Oops. And pull it out. Just find in the end. If you have trouble pulling out your tailor's tacks, that usually means that the um, sewing machine, your row of stitches, has actually gone through the thread, the needles pierced the thread. And so if that happens, just take it off close on one side and then you'll be able to just pull it away really easily on the other. So don't go yanking at it, otherwise you will snap your stitches um, and instead you can do that. So if we look at this now, we've got this long straight edge just here and we've got two ears pointing the same direction. So that's all correct and everything else. That's how it should be. And I've just put the two ends together like that and just put my ears to each other and just kind of made sure that they're, they're roughly in the same place and, and they are. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to be doing is attaching the mane. So if you locate your faux fur piece, can't stop stroking this, um, and you'll know that we cut it out with the direction of the fur going traveling downwards in line with the arrow. So that's when you stroke it like that, it smooths it down and that's the correct way. So let's remove this pattern piece now and then put the pattern piece to one side. Now, when we're attaching this mane to the head, we need to be have a few ideas in terms of location of this. So we we know we've got the this front flat edge with the boucle of the ear pointing forwards. We're actually going to be attaching the mane down the back of here, around this curved edge. So can you see the difference between the two? There's the straight edge at the front, and here's the curved edge going around the back. And that's where we want to be attaching the um, mane to. So we also want to flip the mane fabric upside down. Oh, I've got bits all over the place, sorry. Um, so that 
the fur when we're using it on the donkey is going to be really standing up if we if we attach it this way the fur is very nice and smooth and that might be a look you're going for but I think it looks a little bit um, more textural and more impactful if it's going the other way and that's the way this is this is the way that Sarah says to use it so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to locate the curved edge first of one of our pieces so it's the piece with the dart in look, the dart where the ear was attached, and making sure that the, the overhang of the fur is at the front, so that's going to make us a little fringe, if you like. This is take two as well, because I have already sewn the fur on once and got it the wrong way round. Um, not the wrong way round, but I got it um, onto the wrong edge. So it is really it is important to get this bit right. So if we, if we pop the ears, down on our work surface so that we've got the boucle facing each other and then we're going to turn the fur upside down so that it's we've got the pile going away from us and up towards the edge of our table that's the correct way that this is going to fit because then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we attach the right piece to the right fur so you're going to take the um that's the left hand isn't it the left hand you're going to flip it right over on top of the fur so the dart is on top of the fur and then attach that first edge there to the first edge of the fur so let's just put a pin in there do you need me just to show you that again so have you have your two pieces like this because it's a bit kind of counterintuitive that's why it made me makes me stop and think for a few moments so we're gonna we want we want this fur to be the right way up. So when we finish, we want that to be like that. I mean, that's the way you can perhaps do it, isn't it? Perhaps a bit easier. So that fur is gonna sit around that curved edge with the boucle facing forwards. So once you've sort of got that together, you're identifying where your forehead is, if you like, and the fur pile wants to be coming out over the forehead. So once you've got that, you can then flip that over onto your fabric so that you've got the two right sides together now I'm going to sew with the first side down so I'm tucking all of those strands of the fluff and the fur underneath and inside the pattern piece and away from the cut edge and then we're going to put a pin in here and then we're going to then go follow that fur raw, raw edge all the way over the ear and it's going to come down to the back of the neck down here so again, just keep smoothing that fur out of the way. I don't want to put any sellotape on it to hold it out of the way because I don't want to lose any of the fur because we want that to be really impactful. So this is the bottom of the edge. So we're going to put that there. So, so let's just get our bearings again. There's the dart for the ear. Here's the, going to be the fringe at the very front. And if we look inside, we can see the boucle of the inside of the ear. So we know that's right. And then what we're going to do now is just attach this main piece of faux fur down the curved edge at the back of the head so we're going down this curved edge here with the dart on it okay yeah, I know I really go over these points but I think sometimes it's um it's these points that we can get wrong and as I say I ha I've had to unpick this because I put it down the wrong side I hadn't quite grasped where I was okay but then I make the mistake so you don't have to. So that's what it's going to look like. So we've got an ear sticking out here, we've got the back of the ear sticking out, we've got our dart here, and that's the seam, the curved seam that the faux fur is going to sit along. We're then going to take this to our machine and we're going to sew it here with a um, half centimetre seam allowance around that curved edge. So we're going to take our time because it's quite thick so let's bring down machine. The other thing that I've done as well is I've now moved my needle across to the left so that it's um, we're only going to have a small amount of the presser foot onto the felt and the fur. So making sure that's all tucked in. And I'm starting at the forehead edge. We're going to have to eyeball the half a centimetre seam allowance. A few stitches forward. Oops, it's not catching and a few stitches back and then you're, you're needling your work and let's take that pin out 
you can always use your awl just to help kind of move things along if you need to. Just take a moment to smooth things down as much as you can do. And we've got quite a bulky bit to come over the top of the ear here. So I'm just going to spread that seam allowance open with my awl so that as we're going across here, we can, we can ease that in. Okay, so let's do a little bit more. Taking our time. And I'm putting pressure on my work here and kind of twisting it as it goes. And then as we go round, I will move the fur under so that we don't get any of that trapped. So a couple more stitches. Then take out my next pin. And the bulk of that ear is going to try and throw you off with your presser foot, which is why I've only got about a quarter of my presser foot onto the um, actual sewing itself. So I'm trying to keep that quite minimal and not have to have all of it on. So that's why I've moved my needle across to the left. Probably could do with turning my speed down on my machine as well. It's not a time to be speeding around. So when you just stop, just make sure you've got everything all evened out underneath because that will help. I'm going to put another pin out. And then we're going to follow this curve round because it comes around to the back of the neck and then it drops down. So we need to make sure we don't make that into a straight seam because we'll lose some of the um, shaping if we do. As you're coming down here, just remember you can always leave your needle in the work and lift your presser foot and just pivot slightly to get yourself into the right direction. And then we're going to reverse at the bottom of that neck again. Needle out of our work and then we can cut off our threads. So there we are, that's my stitcher down around there. And I'm just making sure that I've got enough um, seam allowance caught just there. So then we're going to take the other piece. We can just fold this out as well and just check. And you need this nice flat edge here and you need the boucle of your fa fabric facing forwards so that when we then sew on the next piece here, we've got that um, shape that we need to be working with. Okay, so once we've got our orientation correct on this first side, let's have a look at doing the other side. So let's get the curved edge again, and that's going to be what's going to match together onto this section. So as so long as you've got your boucle white ear up, you can then take that piece and attach that to what is going to be in effect the forehead. And that's your first reference point. So pop that in and pop a pin. And then we're going to, keeping your fur tucked all the way round, you can sort of tuck it under the ear is actually quite useful. Follow it all the way round and then pin at the very bottom at the neck edge because then you know where you're, you're going, if you like, and where you're heading. They're your two reference match points. So pin at the bottom of the, of the neck, following that curve. And then all we do is just match the raw edges up together again and then we just sew up the other side just as I have done before. Now this one is a little bit fiddlier, so you do have to just take your time if you've got a speed control on your machine, you might want to just slow it down slightly just to give you the best chance of success. And then we know we're on the right edge as well because it's it's curved and we've also got the dart for the ear on there. So we know that we've got that, um, that place right. And I'm just going to spread the seam allowance for the ear open, which will then help us sew. So I'm again, I'm so again, this time I'm going to sew again with the with the faux fur down on my on my um sewing machine bed because that's the flat side and we can then follow the curve more easily on this side so i'm just going to put that under my machine watching out for all the pins and eyeballing the half a centimeter seam allowance a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back and then i'm going to then put my needle in my work and anchor that down before i take the first pin out have your all ready so that you can help this through because as I say it is thick and especially when you're going near the ear but if you can if you are able to move your needle across it does mean you've not I've got half of the presser foot not even on the head at all and that means you've not got so much bulk to try and get this all over so again let's just do some more just following the curve of the head so we want to keep that shaping in take it nice and steady just stop to take your pins out. And every time you stop, just sort of make sure you've not got anything underneath your presser foot that you don't want to get sewn in. 
and I'm just putting pressure on this as I turn it round. Take the pins out. And if you need to, because you've got your needle in the work anchoring it down, you can lift up your presser foot and then pivot without losing your place. So just remember that you can do that should you wish to. Try not to get too close to the edge. If you do, if you if you if you find you've got too close to the edge, just reverse, finish off your stitches, and then move forward again. Um, and that should help you then get yourself straight again. So again, let's just pull all of this back back bulk out of the way, S split the ears, and then we get the seam allowance of the ears, so we can hopefully get that flattened down. And then pins out as we go. Try and take out the right one. And then you can just use that all just to smooth the fur back, should you need to and anchor it down so that we can sew that through forward. And then when we get to the edge here, I'm just going to reverse stitch again. I'll take this out. Okay. Let's take our starting threads off and we'll have a look, look at our stitching. So I started here, we've gone all the way around the curve and I'm just checking on this side that we've got enough seam allowance. I think we have, we're a bit narrow there, but I think we'll be okay. Ah, no, we won't be because that's just slipped underneath. So I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to redo over this section here, just here. And then the rest of it looks like that's pretty okay. No, a bit narrow there as well. So what I tend to do is put a pin in where we're narrow and we want to redo because then that will just remind me the rest of that's okay. And then just here, I'll remember that bit anyway. So I probably won't go all the way around, but I'll just go over again the bits that feel a little bit narrow. Oops, too many, too fast. So let's cast that off. That's that section there has made that a bit deeper. Yep, and then back in again at this section here. Two stitches forward, reverse. And then just redo those sections. Let's say it's, it's, unless you've cut anything off, then generally we can we can make it into a save, can't we, in sewing? So that's all looking good. So then let's poke this out now and we can see that we've got a lovely, lovely fluffy mane here and we've got our ears pointing forwards. And that's where I realised I'd got mine wrong last time because my the back of my ears were forward and I'd actually sewn um, my, my um, mane onto the wrong sec onto the flatter section instead of the bigger section. But I think it was, it was quite an easy mistake to make, which is why I'm owning up to it, just so that you know to, to be aware that that's a possibility. OK, then to the next thing that we're going to do is put that to one side, this piece, and we're going to get on and we're going to make the nose bridge and make the front head panel. OK, so we've got the two pieces of the side head here. I've still got my pattern pieces attached, so I know which ones I'm talking about. And we've got the nose bridge. I just want to make sure that we've got these in the right orientation. So I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the picture on the instructions and you need one with the little, the narrower ends pointing towards the left and then you need one with a narrower end pointing towards the right and then the nose bridge sits in the middle with this v-shape and if we keep coming back to this orientation then we're going to stay fine and make sure we've got it in the right way the first thing we're going to do is take the nose bridge so let's take the pattern piece off that and put that somewhere safe and you'll see i've still got my pin marking the right side of my fabric and on this what we need to do is on the right side we need to press those two right sides together so it matches up perfectly and we're just going to sew this little dart in the um in the in what well, little dart little triangle that needs sewing together so that's fairly straightforward so let's do that so i'm, I'm literally not going to use any pins for this and it's only a, a couple of millimeters you need to sew for that so just as long as you're catching the fabric so i'm just going to start and then reverse and then off the end and just reverse And there we've got our little 
little dart in there. So we need to place this now so that the right side. So we we'll keep the right. We we'll keep the right side up just for now, but keep your dart to the to the back edge so you know where you are. And then we're going to take one side piece here, right side again, and we're just going to flip it over and lie it on top of our nose bridge. And we're going to match up the start. And then now we've got the right sides together, we can take that extra pin out, if I can find it. Oh, it's got stuck in. There it is. And I match up the end first. So match up your two match points. And then in the middle, we've got two notches and we can put a pin there just to hold those two together if we want. It fits together nicely, so there's not too much manipulation to go on. And then we're going to sew this together with a half a centimetre seam allowance. Make sure you keep any shaping in on the edges. So if it's a curved line, as this is slightly, you don't want to, can you see there's just a slight curve in it there. Don't sew it just straight across. Make sure you keep your even seam allowance all the way through. Okay, and then we're going to open that one out. And pop that back down again. And then we are then, oops, if it'll sit straight for me going to take our final piece of the side head we've still got our right side in pinning for that side I'm going to flick that over onto the top so again these this the widest point goes straight across where this dart is just to confirm that to you so that's where that that the widest part then the dart then the widest part just helps you get your orientation doesn't it okay pin at the start Go right to the end, pin the end section. So we've got those two match points right, and then your notches which should fit straight on top of each other as well. Okay, so pattern pieces to one side. Let's just go and sew this piece now. Again, half a centimetre seam allowance. Needle in the work, pin out. Try not to sew over your pins if you can help it because that will affect the machine over time. I'm just making sure you keep that curve in your pattern pieces. And then reverse as well at the end. And take our threads off. Okay. This is what we've got from the, from the right side. And then as in the picture from the wrong side, there's two seams here that Sarah says to press outwards now I'm not going to press mine because I haven't pressed this wool as yet but I'm just going to I'll finger press it and you can just run your fingernails across there just to kind of open that seam out we're going to stuff it anyway so it won't make that much difference I don't think at this stage and just make sure if you have snipped your fabric to mark your notches just make sure that your stitches go beyond the um mark that where your notches open because you don't want to have your a hole in your felt at that point okay so there's our nose bridge at the moment so we're just going to flick the um bridge around so that we've got the dart because the dart actually forms the full forehead of the donkey's face and that's the point at which it's going to attach to the to the fur faux fur and we've got our headpiece here. So if we spin our headpiece around, so the headpiece is upside down, the, and we spin our darted bit up, upside down so that we've got our, dart, uh, our wrong side, we can see our seam allowances, then the middle of the dart fits into the middle of the forehead. And the, I think there was, there isn't a little notch there, is it? We just have to kind of guesstimate it. And then looking at your reference points of your darts or the other bits, they just kind of go just either side of the, the other bits. What am I talking about? My seam allowances attaching the nose bridge to the side of the heads um, goes in the middle there. Then come down to the edge and attach the edge of the face just there. So that goes onto there one side 
And then let's just let's just pin this one side first so we know where we are. Tuck all your fur back in because you want to kind of save most of that to be showing on the right side. So tuck all of that in and then this should sit quite nicely against the edge that we're going to be sewing. So you just need a couple of pins in there just to hold that open. We'll hold it together, should I say. And I will be opening, that's what I was thinking of when I was saying it. And um, We're going to be opening that seam allowance out on the centre of the head as we go along. So again, here we've got fur flicking out and tufting out. So I'm just going to get hold of that and just smooth all of that as much as I can do inside the actual head itself. And then once you're ready there. So the, 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 yeah, the darts do kind of, um, the, the two lots of seam allowances do line up, I think, pretty much. And then go down to the bottom of the neck edge and then put a pin in there. So you're trying to make sure you've got both sides of your face even. And I don't think I have because I've got one a bit more full than the other. So let me just, that's better. So yeah, your seam allowances aren't on top of each other. Well, they aren't on mine anyway. Might be yours if I've if you've done slightly bigger seam allowance so that's what we've got when we look at it so we've got this is the curved edge here that we've got that will eventually form the throat and we've got the long edge sewn together there's the other curve there and then we've got our ears and our mane pointing out at the top here so hopefully yours looks something like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to start on this edge here and then I'm going to reverse and I'm going to stitch all the way around here I'm going to have that longer piece Again, so you can kind of push it inside itself if you wanted to. That gives you a nice edge, doesn't it? So I've pushed the ears and the mane into this, like the bowl that's made from the headpiece that you're doing. Start here, half a centimetre seam allowance. I'm going to open up these seam allowances if I can as I go past them, just to make that easier and less bulky. And then I'm going to finish at the other neck edge. All sounds fairly easy, doesn't it? So... Again, I've just got my presser foot with my needle pointed across to the left side. Oh, can you see? Let me just move you up slightly. There you go. With my needle pushed across to the um, left side so that we're only going to be having part of the presser foot on the seam as we're sewing it. Cause just make it quite easy. You've got quite a lot of pins poking up here, so do be careful that you're not going to stab yourself. This perhaps isn't a step for a child to be doing just because there are a lot of pins around. You can try using binding clips if you wanted to, to do this bit too. A few stitches forward and a few stitches back and have your all at the hand ready to just to help you locate and remove pins, that type of thing. Oh gosh, getting prickled. So let's lift up that pin just there and I can take it out without pulling too much fur with me, hopefully. Needle in my work. I should have put that in before I try to take my pin out. Make sure your raw edges are together and then let's carry on stitching around. You're not going to be able to see very well, I don't think, because my hands are going to be in the way. So let's just take the next pin out. Sometimes you can use your awl just to get underneath the head of the pin and just pull it through. You can also um, tack this if you wanted to tack this first before you start sewing it on the machine. That would save you getting prickled by your pins as well. I should have thought of that, shouldn't I? Right, coming up to a seam allowance here. So let me just open that out with my awl. And then I'm just going to hold that down whilst we go under the presser foot so that that takes that nicely. Try and go very fairly slowly if you can do. Remember, you're going around a curve, so I keep getting fluff in my, in my face, so it's making my face tickle. Um, so if you need to pivot by taking up your presser foot, make sure your needle's in your work first, and then you can move things round and then carry on sewing down the next section. So coming up to a seam allowance again, I'll have to stop for a pin first, but let's do a few more stitches. Pin out. And again, the reason why I'm showing you how slow I go while I'm doing this, and it might be painful for you to watch, but I want you to have some realistic view as to how long this can take to do. Um, it isn't a two minute job and it is fiddly, so you do have to just take your time. Whereas if I just said, yes, just sew with that seam and then you've got a finished result, you'd have no benchmark then to know how long it actually takes to do and how fiddly it is. And I try and be real wherever I can. 
nearly nearly all the way back down to the other side nearly there I do love this faux fur, it is very, very um, effective. So reverse at the end there, because that neck edge is where it's going to be attached to the character, so it needs to be quite strong. Okay, starting threads, let's locate both of those. There's one, where's the other one gone? I don't know where the other one's gone. Snip it off, okay. Let's have a little look and see how we're doing. We've got all of our pins out. So let's tuck the ears and mane out and see how we're doing. Aha, our donkey is starting to take shape. If you've got any fur caught in any of your seams, just pull it through and just gently ease it out. And that should make it sit nicely. So I've got a nice tufty mane there between the ears. The ears are facing forward, which is a result because they weren't before. And then the next thing that we got. So now that we know that we're right with that, I'm going to tuck the ears back in again. And I believe that the next step that we're going to be doing, once that's all tucked back in again, is we're going to locate this curvy edge here. So you've got a boxy edge here with two seam allowances. We're not doing that. We're doing this little um, curvy edge just here. And that's going to be the throat. So you match up your bottom edges there. And then match up your top edges here, both edges. So this little boxy bit here is staying open that's where the muzzle's going to go into in a minute and then we're just going to stitch along here now with half a centimeter seam allowance you've caught enough of that to make it a nice strong seam. Take your starting threads off and then we're going to gently just pull on an ear or just use our fingers just to push the ears through. Try not to put too much strain on that edge because we don't want to be stretching the felt and the neck edge if we can help it. If we just take it nice and steady it'll all come out together. Okay. So again, we've got our face coming together now. Looks a little bit like an anteater, doesn't it, with its long nose? Okay. So we've not put any eyes or anything on yet. So we're waiting. We'll do those bits in a minute. But we've got the dart there for the forehead. We've got the lovely long fringe there that's going to go over the front of the mane, um, over the front of the head. And then we've got our lovely spiky mane sort of pushing out and we've got the bouquet of the ears facing forwards that's all good so far so the next thing i think we're going to work on now is going to be um, putting together the muzzle and then attaching the muzzle so let's get our muzzle piece made out of the bouquet and let's take our pins out of this you can see that i've already done my tailor's tacks the same way as i did them before on the dots and i've also put a little snip in the side for the edge of the dart but that's not showing very well so let me just locate that and I'll just put a pin in just to locate the edges of that just to make it easier to see and your, your um, muzzle might have been cut out on the fold so just open yours out and then mark your darts on that but they're all pointing towards the the, the middle and then on the boot clay yeah I've got a cut there I've got a cut there and on there one there I can see, yeah, I can see the cuts. Just make sure you can see your cuts on the edge for your the rest of it. Hold on to your threads as you're taking your pattern piece off. The first thing we're going to do then is we are going to put the two ends of the darts together, heading facing towards the point end, and we're going to put a pin in that's just going to show us where we're going to stitch. So we need one pin in. So let's just do one at a time rather than um, mess about with the rest of the darts. So we're going to start, I'm going to change my thread over to white and then we're going to start at this edge and then we're going to sew and finish just where the tailor's tack is. So let me just get my machine all loaded up with thread. Hold on one second. Okay, so I've just loaded my machine up with thread. Um, you don't get the white thread with the kit. You have to use some from your own supplies for that. 
So line your needle up with the edge of the dart where the pin is pointing to. And at that point then I'm gonna slide my pin out because now I'm heading towards the end of the dart. Hold on to your thread so you don't get a nest under your work. And then a couple of stitches forward and a couple back just to start that off. And then you might need to just pull on your threads at the back of it just to enable you to get to the end of that dart. And I have just reversed on that dart, although I don't normally. Cut off your starting threads. And then if you've left a little tail for your other threads, then you can just knot that. So you can either reverse so and or do these little knots at the end just to make sure that's nice and secure. Oh, it's fiddly with little bits of thread, isn't it, sometimes? Right, nearly there. Just do two today, being as my fingers don't really want to work very well. Sometimes it can be easier to get in at the end of a, a quick unpick or you're all in if you've got to be taking threads through each other. So that's another, another tip. And I've cut those threads off about at about a centimetre. Then we've finished with that tailor's tack, so we can take those threads out. As I say, if some of them don't want to come out, cut one edge quite close to the edge. So it'll mean that the sewing machine has actually gone through those threads with the needle, and then you should be able to pull the other ones out fairly easily. There we go. Okay, so those to one side. So let's do the same with the other one. Legs of the darts together, which I've got pins denoting that for me. I'm gonna take one pin out and then put reposition the other one so I know where I'm heading towards. I'll just sew the other one in. Oh, I need the other. Let's put the dart, let's put the pin the other way around. Just towards that way. So then we can slip it out once we've got it positioned under the sewing machine. That's it. the two darts sewn into the nose. Oops, threads out again, wanting to get caught in. And just pull these out and get these out while you're not on camera and then I will, well, I suppose actually you ought to see me doing it really so that you can see that I, it does work. So one side off and then the other one should just pull straight out. That's it. Another one there. I just want to make sure we've not got any thread showing on the other side. There we go, pulls out quite nicely. Okay, so there's a bit of our nose. And then with the other bit, we actually want to just fold some soft pleats. So let's locate the legs of those snips that we did there. They're together there, so let's put those together. Snip there, snip there. Those are clearer to see, let's do that. And Sarah actually pushes them out to this side, like that for one of them. Let's just put a pin in there, to hold that in place, locate a snip and another snip. Put that together so the spare fabric is coming towards you. And then just fold it out to the side. They don't look even to me. We do need them to be even because we need a symmetrical face on our character. So that's that one goes in there. Oh, picked up some thread. One snip there. There's the other snip, right? Fold those two together. Put a pin down that point. So that'll hold those and then they've got to go over to the side. Okay, that's looking better. I think this is actually forming the nostrils now, I think. So I'm just gonna just pull it, push it back on its side and just make sure, yeah, we've got two nostrils down the bottom there, and then we've got the top of the muzzle on the top there, just going together. Okay. And so the idea, the suggestion is that we just do a little tack 
along this edge here just to hold that together before we do anything else. You can do it on the machine if you wanted to. Um, just feed it under or you can hand stitch it but you want to be just really narrow on your seam allowance for this. Use your awl just if you have to hold it down. Okay, that has held those together. The um, boucle does have a tendency to stretch, so just be careful how you're handling it because you want it to not stretch out of shape for you. So we've got a dart, a little sorry, a little fold, a little fold, and a dart and a dart. When we put it round, we've got like the muzzle shape. So the next thing we're going to do now is take some thread and I'm going to use a contrast thread so you can see it but we're just going to take some little stitches and we're going to go all the way around the circumference of this this inverted circle really in order that we can then gather that up so that it'll fit inside the inside the head. So let's get a needle to do that. Hold on one second. Okay, so I've got my hand thrown sewing needle and I'm going to use this this thread double because I think it, it'll take, we're going to be pulling on it, I think, just to make sure that it sort of sits inside the the muzzle and of the and the nose of the character, the donkey, correctly. So let's just do a, oh, lost my end, just do a quilter's knot on the end of here. There is a video on my channel of how to do a skill builder on how to do a quilter's knot. Okay. So we've got a nice knot on the end there. And then with the um, knot starting, so we've got the wrong side facing me, and I'm just going to take some little, little what's called a running stitch. So in and out, little like stab stitches in and out around the edge of the, around the edge of the muzzle. And just going singularly through those darts where we need to, because they're a bit thick to work with and what's that's going to happen is this is going to gather up this edge of the muzzle so that we can then fit it inside the nose but then it kind of is going to bulge out a little bit on the other side of the nose and give that sort of donkey kind of muzzle look because it's quite a a big muzzle isn't it on a donkey so let's just do this again and the darts we are pushing out to the outside Oops. and the muzzle I'm going to fit in by hand as well um, you can try and do it by machine but I think you're going to have too tight a, an area to work with so if this is the only bit we have to really hand sew then that's okay and I'm finishing off with the thread coming out on the inside as well Okay, so let's go to our head. So don't get your neck edge and your nose edge um, ma um, mixed up because they're quite similar. So you, so the neck edge has got the main finishing right on it, whereas the nose edge has got the dart and the forehead. So we're just going to turn this back round the other way that we probably shouldn't have turned it the way round, but I do like to know that I've got it the, the right orientation and that we've before we move on, we've got the right bit in the right place. So let me just get a binding clip rather than using a pin because we've put a binding clip on the edge that we're going to be actually sewing the muzzle onto we'll know that we won't get mixed up so there we go let's poke that now through to get the long edge of the nose and the other bit that you know is you've not got any mane you're not stitching it onto any mane at all so let's take that clip off now and now I know where I am and now let's orientate ourselves with our muzzle now let's just have a look and see which way she says so the folds are the nostrils to the bridge so that's those two edges there and actually there's a center snip there so we can put that in so I'm going to just push that muzzle inside the edge there and put a pin through from the outside, I think, will be easier. Perhaps pointing downwards so we don't stab ourselves so quite so much. That's holding that on. And then the nostrils are going to match up 
with the bridge of the nose. So I can put a pin in that side as well. And let's go and do the other nostril. That's there. So we've just done the bridge of the nose at the moment with the two folds, not the darts, just the folds. And then we're then going to match the darts equally distant from the throat seam. So here's one dart, here's the other dart. Let's get the middle of there and then let's just put a pin in to hold that against the throat seam just to hold that in place for us so that we've got that kind of in the right place. So now we're going to pull on our gathering threads just to th gather the muzzle up so that it will fit inside that nose edge and sit nicely all together. Oops, hopefully you can see I'm trying to do this on camera. And you want those gathers to kind of go all the way around. Oh, sorry, excuse me car noise okay that's feeling about right gosh that's a noisy one isn't it it's not ours but we live in an apartment block here in Spain and so you do sometimes get other noises and it's too nice to have the windows closed today okay so there we go, that's how it's looking. Kind of gathered up on the inside and that's my gathering thread. So I'm just gonna slip that off now because I think that that's holding everything in place anyway. It's not, it's not trying to unravel. Um, and I've eased that all around. If I need to, I can just pull on the knot as well and just pull that side in. Okay, that pins the wrong way round. So that's it going to pinch me otherwise, stab me. Just turning the pins around so it'll make it easier to sew. So basically the, the, the muzzle is, has, got, has kind of gone inside that the um, nose area and then we're going to now stitch round it with our thread colour. I'm probably going to use white, I think. I think that'll disappear closely. And it says to use a back stitch, so now we'll do a back stitch and show you how to do that. So we've got quite a long piece of thread because I'm going to double it over. Take our tacking thread out, we don't need that now. I'm going to put my glasses on because with hand sewing I tend to wear my glasses. So let's have our thread double. Do a quarters knot on the end here. One, two, three, four, and through. There we go. Right. I am going to start just on a flat edge where we've not got any seam allowances. It doesn't matter. We're going all the way round anyway. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to take a stitch and I've got my finger inside the nose, you know, inside the nose muzzle so I can feel that my stitches are going to go all the way through. So we're just taking one stitch. So with a back stitch, before you travel forward, you go back. So you go, as in a back stitch. So we're now going to go back towards the knot halfway between the stitch we've just taken. And I can feel the, the needle on the inside of my, uh, against my finger. And then you're gonna take a little stitch and come halfway forward again from where you were. So again, you always travel back half a stitch before you then come forward almost half a stitch. You get this little little light running stitch on there, but it's, it's stronger because you've gone backwards before you then go forwards again. So just taking our time and going through all the thicknesses that present themselves at every point at which we're sewing, because sometimes we're sewing through the dart and sometimes we're sewing through through the gathers of the muzzle just to make that sit right. So I'm going to take a little stitch up until the seam allowance. Let's take that pin out because I've finished with that one. 
So a little stitch up to the seam allowance. Just make sure if you get any loops, just pull on your threads. It happens a lot, so just pull on your threads to make it nice and neat, and that's what it looks like. And then I'm just going to go through the seam allowance, just literally through there, not through any boucle, just through the seam allowance to the other side. And then we're going to start again. So almost in place. Make sure you, again, feel the needle going through against your finger. And I'm doing about half a centimetre seam allowance on here again, backwards, and then a, a stitch forward. And you can go around more than once if you want to, just to belt and braces it if you will, if you like. Put these pins out of the way because I don't want that to get stuck in the head of the character at all. If we were being very conscientious, then we'd set we'd count our pins that we're using before we start, and we'd count our pins again when we finish. Now that's quite thick, so I'm going to go right the way through into the middle rather than bend my needle and try and get it through. And then I'm going to come out again through the other side just because that was really thick. Just try and keep to your seam allowance and then when you can, you can just keep going backwards and forwards in again and out again. Pins get in the way, just get rid of those. Okay, there we go. Just going all the way around. And I think I might well go round again, I think. Just to be sure. So you do want to be sure I'm coming up to another seam allowance here. So I've come through. I'm just going to go through that seam allowance on its own without trying to attach it down to anything. And then we're on a really thick bit. So let me just put my needle through. And then just do a single stitch just to secure that in place. And then, yep, I'm just going to just keep doing this back stitch all the way round. And I think I'm going to go round twice just to make sure that I've got it all in the right place and that we've not got any big gaps between any of the stitches. Hopefully this white thread will be lost in the um, boucle. So it'll just look like bits of fur when we get round to doing that. And then what I will do is take my tacking stitches out and then turn it round the other way round, the head round through the neck edge. And that should then give us the bit that we need. So let's just keep doing this. Take pin out. Through the last piece of seam allowance, through to the other side. Whoops. Then we're nearly at the beginning again. So yeah, I'm just going to go around a second time just because I think that'll just hold it all together much nicer and be just nice and secure and keep it nice and tight. If you think you've done a good enough job first time round, by all means just do the once round. It's up to you. And then I'll meet you on the other side once I've turned the head round. So again, you're going to turn the head round through the neck. Try not to stretch it too much if you can help it. Um, and I'll join you once I've done that. And we'll see how, we, how we're doing. Okay, so here we have our little donkey with his muzzle and his head all looking good. Just make sure that your area is clear of pins because the next thing we're going to do is now is going to stuff this. Now we do need to be careful not to stuff the muzzle too much because it will stretch. So let's start with that bit first and just take your little handful of stuffing. Oops, and get it inside the head. And we'll pop it into the nose, into the muzzle first, just to start it off. Obviously we've checked all the seams and made sure that we're happy with all of those as well before we start doing anything else. We don't need very much into the muzzle because it's... It's fairly well kind of sorted already. I'm just looking at the... There, yeah, that's okay. And then we're just going to start now just stuffing the rest of the... into the head. We can poke a bit more in if we want to. Now, there is one bit in the, in the instructions that is 
has confused me completely and I don't know if it confused anybody else when they've read it and it's at the bottom of step um, eight where it says about the muzzle, sewing, um, sewing the muzzle onto the head and it says um, you will come back to the head once you have constructed the mask so the stuffing may have to set, have settled and you may need to add more later. I have no idea what she's referring to as a mask because I've gone back into the instructions later on down the list. Um, and whether it's been copied from another character or not, I don't know. Um, whether it's, oh, I was wondering if it's from um, the raccoon because raccoons have like a mask, don't they? Um, anyway, it's um, whatever it is. Don't, don't you get confused by it because there is nothing you need to know about that section. So I'm just trying to keep the fur out of the neckline just so that it doesn't start to get matted and tangled because faux fur can do that. And then just starting to build up the stuffing inside the head. So I do like to stuff my characters quite firmly but I do just need to be careful of the um, muzzle bit, don't we? Just so that we don't stretch that out too much. Don't forget to put some in the back of the head as well so you can get your character. Whoops! Sorry, major wobble on the camera. Let's try that. <laughs> but you're dizzy, won't I? I'm sick. Just make sure that if you're making your characters for a child that you use the correct stuffing to make sure that it's toy friendly. Although these are not really toys, are they? They're more heirloom items, really. Oops, it's kind of coming together. A bit more into the nose, a bit more into the head. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do after we've got this head nicely stuffed and that we're happy with it and we're happy with the shape is we're going to be cutting out the eyes out of the felt. I haven't, the pale of felt that's in the kit, I haven't done that as yet because I didn't want to lose them and I'm good at losing little pattern pieces like that and then having to cut them out again. So I thought I'd wait. So there's our donkey coming together and once his his fringes over his forehead, then that should start to look quite nice. A bit of extra stuff in, and then we're going to put his eyes on, and he's got his nose. Nose is quite long, isn't it, actually? And I'm not going to stuff that muzzle too much, but I am going to make sure the head's nice and firm. Okay, I see you on the other side of doing this when we're going to talk about attaching the eyes. Okay, so I've just traced off my two eyepieces here and I've located from the button pack the two buttons for the eyes. If I just let you know that they are about one centimetre across for the button pieces. Um, I'm just going to get the doll needle because I think that'll be the easiest way. And I'm just pushing his, foot, his mane away from his forehead there so that, that will make it easier for us to... Oops. Locate. Oh, Donnie, there we go. So I've taken a small, I use these, whoops, I use these hemline doll needles, a bit of a battered packet now, but doll needles from hemline. And they've got three in them, so they've got a three and a half inch, a five and an eighth inch, and a six and seven eighth inch in there, so that's quite useful. I use the biggest one for going through the body when I'm doing the legs. Um, and I'm also going to use, it says to use a lighter thread. And I have got some um, strong thread, which I'm going to use. Let me just pick that up. This is the thread that I use, which is a Coates Epic Thread 050. That's the, that's the size of it. And it's so strong, I can't even break that with my bare hands. And then what I do is take a decent length, because we're going to be going through from one side to the other. So take a long piece and snip that off. And I'm going to thread that through with my needle first nice big eye so that's nice and easy to do and all the way through so it's double which in theory means that we have to take less stitches and then make sure they're even then I'm just going to do a two or three circles around my needle and do a quilter's knot as I say there is a video on my channel how to make those knots it's not quite finished off properly there we go how's now so I've looked at the pa at the picture here for the donkey, and what I can see is that the um, eye is to is, so the 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 tick, if you like, of the eye is going towards the back, just past that halfway seam, just there, and then the eye sits just forward on there. So I'm going to attach the felt bit first on one side, 
So let's just go through where that's going to go. So I'm just putting it with one eye, one end through. Sorry, Sol or Sydney, whichever one you are. So I'm just going a little bit further forward, about the same on both sides, just to attach that knot and just to keep that out of the way. Then making sure that we've got the tick of the eye slightly back and almost in line with the nose seam, then I'm going to go through the through the um, felt. <laughs> oh, I'm making this look very amateur, sorry. Right, let's reposition that. Okay, so about there. Then I'm just gonna go through to the other side again, just taking a bite out of the felt. To back to the knot. So I'm just attaching the felt on first. If you just get your threads just loop out like that, just pull on one thread then the other until it disappears. Right, that's in. So that little bit of felt's on already, so it's kind of in the right place, I believe. I'm just smooth my thread down with an, with an aim of getting that right. So let's just take a stitch through the felt now, in and out. to get knots all over the place and just position that one in place too so just along that from that main there and then just it's just going to cover that knot that we had before if you can see and then it's going to come out in the center of this eye again where we've already put our little stitch so I'm going behind that piece of felt for now they look weird, don't they, sometimes? Then I'm going to do a cross in the middle of mine, so it looks like a little sparkle in the middle of his eye. So I put my button on next, but just lose, leave it loose. Just make sure there's no knot in it. And then I'm going to go back through that eye again, pretty much where we've already been, and come out the other side. The good news is there's no embroidery on these faces, is there? So that's quite nice and easy and sort of makes it fairly standard, doesn't it? Let's make sure that eye is going to go. We can position them properly a bit later on. They do look a little bit sinister, don't they, with these eyes sometimes? Okay. Let's put this one on. So again, back through, and I'm just going on a diagonal again. So choose the right holes that you need. And then back in and then this time we're going to go through the hole again on the same on the eye that we've already stitched so that starts to anchor that one in place so one stitch in there and Sarah says that you don't cinch these in at all so you're not trying to pull on these to get them to to go in and you sometimes you just have to keep going backwards and forwards with your needle until you can feel the back of the button and sometimes you can twist the button to make sure that it'll come into the right place so that you can find the other hole and it is a, it is just a trial and error thing until you actually get through and find your hole and you can see sometimes it takes some time another again another one of those situations where you i want to show you how long it takes without editing it all out Right, so that's got two in each hole now. So because I don't want to run out of thread before I've finished, I'm going, to, I'm going to go through this one. This is the second stitch in this orientation on this one, but I'm going to find the new holes that I've not been through yet on this other one. Just trying to pull it closer to the felt. We can always snip a little bit of the felt off if we want to afterwards once we've finished. Yeah, I'm just moving the, the needle backwards and forwards until I can get into the right place. That's it, new hole. Again, make sure you've got no loops there and keep make sure you keep the fluff of the mane out the right out of the way. And then I'm going across this time to make the cross. So we go across into this eye now and get the other hole. And you'll always find the one that you were looking for before. 
Oh, that was my finger. Don't press too hard on it, otherwise you will stab yourself. That's it, got it. Okay. That's made a cross on that one. So we need one more stitch on this one to give it the same amount of threads as the other one. Keep it symmetrical. There we go. And back through this one. And then we'll be looking to cast off and I'll show you how I do that. So that's the second stitch in this eye. Make sure we've not got any loops in the centre. So this time I'm going to go back through the hole to finish that off, but then I'm going to come down into the neck. There's my needle coming out of the neck. Because then I can take a couple of big stitches through the stuffing. And do a couple of stitches through on my thread and that will anchor that down for us so that there's it doesn't won't come undone as easily I always leave a really long tail as well on my threads when I'm doing things like that keep your needle out of the way and then I just tuck that thread into the neck and it'll just get buried in with there so let's just tidy these eyes up put a little bit of fur in that eye oh it does look sinister I'm not sure this character is one of my favorites I want to put a big smile on his face. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. We have completed one donkey head. So we'll pull his mane down, perhaps over his eyes. Maybe they won't look quite so, so bad. So we've got a lovely tufty mane there. We've got our lovely ears, a lovely soft rounded muzzle on there um, and the nose and the eyes sewn on nice and securely. So let me turn the camera around and we'll, and we'll finish up. Okay, so here is our donkey head all finished and all ready for his body. I hope you've enjoyed stitching along with me. I mean, look how crazy that mane is, honestly. Just so, got so much movement in it, hasn't it? It looks great. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed stitching along with me. Thank you again to Tina Page for the um, sponsoring this this video and this kit for us all to have a go at and all to see Tina we really do appreciate your generosity in in demonstrating this I think there are a couple of places where you could go wrong um, if you're not quite sure and can't understand the instructions um, when you see it written on a piece of paper um, no criticism there at all I think a lot of us need to have a look at how something is done excuse the road noise um, and then be able to have a go at it ourselves and hopefully I've demonstrated to you um, how we can put this together and, and, and problem solve that for you if you've been struggling. So the next thing I'm going to get on with is doing the um, body and the legs and tail etc. And we've got the hooves to do haven't we because he's got hooves on this one um, on the donkeys. If you've enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to my channel um i've got a lot of lunar lapping kits stacked up here that are waiting to be made on that side actually waiting to be made so we've got quite a lot to come through i've got kilts to make i've got thespian shirts i've got otterline's outfit to make including her anorak her fisherman's jacket and her culottes um what else i've got hugh the hound to make as well so there's quite a few coming up so it, it really is worth you subscribing if you haven't already just so that and if you hit the notification bell then you will get a little a little note um a message when it, those videos are uploaded um yeah so i'll get on with this and get this edited and uploaded for you and then at least you can start on the head whilst i'm working on the body so have a great day everybody um it's the bank holiday weekend here for the coronation um it is the 5th of May today 2023 um, so tomorrow is the coronation day so I will be watching that I've got some scones and jam booked um, I'm going to make some scones and my husband's making some homemade sausage rolls so we'll be enjoying those so even if you're not royal even if you don't don't like all of that I hope you find some stitching time or to do anything that you enjoy doing as well have a great weekend everybody and I'll see you all soon take care bye